What is up YouTube? This is Alex AK Foreign. Today we're finally going to talk about which GTX 1060 to buy. So the 1060 released quite some time ago already. It was like early June, mid June, and it released slightly after the RX 480, which basically means that Nvidia answered to the 480 with this card. And the video card has been evolving ever since. I haven't released a video on it because I let the card mature. I let more different coolers to come out. Today, I'm finally at the point where we can talk about it. The 480 is currently out of stock in most places, at least in my country, most probably because of yield issues. Abroad, it's most probably because of Ethereum mining. So the 480 has very few models out right now, like five to seven cards. And I don't see the need to talk about it right now. So the which RX 480 to buy video will come as soon as the card has at least 10 to 15 model. Now concerning the 1060, that's what we're going to talk about today. I ran into some problems. So it was pretty hard to find prices for all the cards, especially the ones that are available only in certain regions because uh, some cards are very difficult to find in the US, others are very difficult to find in Europe. Some of these cards are more difficult to find in Asia or they're more easily found in certain regions or whatever. So here are all the cards that we're going to talk about, but here's the table and the prices are not finished, but what I have here is what I could find. So the colorful cards, Gameward Galact, Inno 3D palette cards were those that I couldn't find the price for. So if you're choosing between the cards that have their prices here and the cards that don't, then compare the prices and I will talk a little bit more about all the cards right away. Another thing that we should keep in mind is that 1060 is very power efficient. There is very little to compare in terms of cooling. If the card has a dual cooler, like the Gigabyte, the MSI, the Palette or whatever, it will be totally fine. A card with a single cooler like the NO3D, the Zotac Mini or the EVGA card will be totally fine as well. But again, the temperatures won't reach the 70s most probably even on a single fan card, but I would still recommend to get the dual fan card if you can. Again, this changes the way we look at this card, so the cooling effectiveness won't be as essential because basically all of these coolers are doing a great job. So we're talking less about power phases and overclocking here because all of the cards will mostly OC the same. And we'll talk more about the pricing and the extra features that these cards have. There are many cards, some of them have the same coolers on different models. So again, keep in mind that there may be three, four different cards that have the same cooler, but are just pre overclocked. I would definitely recommend to avoid the more expensive cards that are pre overclocked because all the 1060s mostly automatically control their frequency and boost up to 18 to 1900 megahertz by themselves. So getting the cheaper card will, will save you 20 to 30 dollars or euros, but you will get the same performance basically. So here is the Excel sheet that I made for the 1060s. There are 35 cards here and we're going to talk about all of them. I've omitted some of the things that I've talked about in my GTX 1080 review, more specifically the memory clock, the power phase, because they are not as important here. The memory clock mostly the same. All the cards and the power phases were very difficult to find for the 1060 and they're also mostly the same or very low either way, which will not affect the overclock as much in terms of the 1060. But we're going to talk more about the other features. In this sheet I have the core clock, the boost clock, the RGB or LED availability, what power pin the card uses, does it have a backplate or not, the number of fans and partly the pricing. In terms of RGB, no means it has no lighting at all, yes means it has full RGB control, partial means that it doesn't have full RGB control, but there still are some LED availabilities like blue, green, red, and so on. So let's start. The first cards are the ASUS cards or ASUS, depending on where you're from and what you've heard. The ASUS dual card is a dual fan white shroud card that goes for $269 to $279. It has a six pin. If you're choosing between the more or less expensive one, I would definitely recommend getting the $269 one because it will still overclock just as well. 
and the Asus ROG Strix card is from the gaming series and these cards are very expensive in all of Nvidia's graphics card tiers. Here it's 309 to 329. I would definitely not recommend buying a GTX 1060 for this price no matter what the cooler is. Next are the EVGA cards. Here we have the EVGA Superclocked slash gaming card which is a single fan little mini card which still cools very well and it goes for the MSRP of the GTX 1060 and the overclocked card goes for 259. I'd recommend getting the 249 if you really need the size factor of this card but a dual fan would still be more recommended. Now the EVJ Super Super Clocked or SSC and for the win edition is here and it starts from 279 and goes as high as 319 dollars. Uses an 8 pin though but in terms of the overclockability that will not help the six pin cards still overclock up to two gigahertz if you overclock it manually anyway and I would maybe recommend getting this if you can get it a bit cheaper or with a game or other bonuses but still this is a very good cooler but I would not pay 300 or 319 dollars for this next the game ward card the prices were unavailable for these, but these are usually very cheap. The dual fan black card, just like the PNY card, we'll talk about that later, both use a 6-pin. These cards are generally regarded as pretty good, and the black aesthetic of this card fits very well into any build, basically. Whereas if the card already has a red stripe or a blue stripe or whatever, then it's far more difficult to fit it in every build. Now, Galax cards are famous for their quality as well especially the Hall of Fame card. But here is the lower tier offerings for the GTX 1060. All three use a six pin power connector. They go mostly from smaller card to bigger card to bigger white card. And if you can find these for around 250 to $60, then I could recommend them. These are the Gigabyte cards. So the Gigabyte Mini ITX, the Windforce OC, and the Windforce D5 and G1 gaming cards, which both use the same cooler. I'd recommend getting the Gigabyte Windforce OC over this because it's just as expensive, but it'll be much cooler if needed. And the Windforce D5 or G1 Gaming is 289, which is kind of high, but I guess it's tolerable. Gigabyte has been pretty notorious for loud cards this generation. You should keep that in mind when choosing a card from Gigabyte, even though they stay really cool compared to all the other cards in both the 1070, the 1080, they may be very loud compared to the other cards, as far as I've heard. Now, Inno3D are very underrated cards in my opinion. The Compact ITX card, which is most probably 249, close to the MSRP. The Inno3D Twin X2 card and the gaming card use the same cooler, but the gaming card has a different PCB. And the Inno3D iChill X3 card is a huge two and a half slot beefy cooler with what looks to be really good cooling capabilities. Inno3D are very good and I would definitely recommend the dual fan card and the triple fan card if you want to actually stay below the 60s maybe. Haven't tested these cards myself, but I'm guessing that this card can hold really low temperatures because of the triple fan solution and the huge heatsink. And this is actually a very cheap card, as far as I know, because the Inno3D triple fan solution is mostly cheaper than the other company's triple fan solutions. Now we come to MSI, which also make really quality cards. Sometimes their cards may be overpriced but in terms of the 1060 right now, they are very fairly priced. You can get this dual fan MSI 6GT and 6GT overclocked for 249 and probably 259 for the overclocked version. I would recommend 249 card because it will OC it just as far anyway. All of the cards that MSI releases feel and look premium. So if you have the ability to buy this card for 249 or 259 for the OC one, I could definitely recommend that. The gaming cards are the more expensive ones. They have a backplate and better cooling, but they come at a steep premium in terms of price. So I would definitely recommend the armor card from here. And if you don't have the armor card, then maybe the MSI 6GT card, the MSI gaming ones. I would recommend it if you could get it for 269 at least. So a little bit cheaper maybe. Palette and PNY cards are here. The price is unavailable because I couldn't find it. But the Jetstream card is very good. It has a two and a half slot cooler. 
So these aluminum fins here that you see, they are pretty big and the coolers cool these fins with cold air from the case and that helps cool the card more efficiently. So the fatter the cooler, so to say, the better the cooling should be in theory. But I've also heard very good things about the Pallet Jetstream card and this card is actually very similar to the Gainward one. In fact, if we look close, it's basically almost the same shroud. These are also mostly close to the MSRP. I could recommend this card if you're on a budget or if you need a black card in your system or if you just don't care. If this card is cheaper than the MSI one here or the armor or you can't buy the MSI or other cards, then both of these cards, the Game Ward one and the PNY or Pallet Dual card are very good choices as well. And last but not least, Zotac cards. So the Zotac Mini, again, single slot tiny card for the MSRP. It'll do the job, but it's still better to have the dual fan. The Zotac amp card here comes without a backplate, but cool. I really like how these heat pipes come through here and are visible. So I think this card actually looks pretty good in my opinion, which is most probably not the same as most of the other people's. But it comes at a premium, really, $279. I don't know if I can recommend it. Most probably I'd recommend it if it's cheaper. So these are all the cards. Let's go back to the Excel sheet here. What I would recommend from these if you're buying. First of all, I definitely recommend the Gigabyte Windforce D5, which uses two fans. And the D5 means that it just didn't pass internal testing for a full G1 gaming card. So basically it's not good enough for G1 gaming standards, but in terms of performance, it still gets the same overclocks and it still works just as well. And it's only 249, so that's a great price for a card like that. So in terms of pricing, I'd recommend, first of all, sorting by price from lowest to highest, and then based on what I said here in this video, choosing the card that is actually the cheapest and has a good cooler. Single fan cards will do the job, but I would definitely recommend a dual fan card to be sure. Don't worry about the power pins, the six pin will be enough for all of your needs. RGB, I would definitely not worry about that at all as well. And the core clock and boost clocks also play a very little role because with GPU boost 3.0, all the GTX 1060s boost up to 18 to 1900 megahertz. The number of fans is what I would look into the most, the backplate and the pricing. This video could actually be a celebration to me getting 300 subscribers on my channel mostly due to the popularity of my GTX 1070 video where I talked about which one to buy there. Since then, I've definitely, in my opinion, improved on how I present the information and what I talk about, but I would definitely like to hear your suggestions and what kind of content would you like to see from me. I can't get graphics cards to play around with. I myself own an R9 290X that I can maybe play around with, unless it dies on me at some point, which would be very sad. But what I'm planning to do in the near future is uh, making maybe some live videos, because I don't have a proper camera to record anything, but I have a mobile phone and I can record how I disassemble some uh, dead video cards. I have a few dead video cards that I can film me disassembling. If that interests you, then please leave a comment below or suggest something that I could do to make my channel more interesting and engaging. I thank you for your attention and hope to see you later.